Broach is a free Roach-like game created by Brian Walker. It is available on a wide range of operating systems like Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Before delving deep into the game, I'm going to talk about the Roach-like genre and how it started. The first game that used and invented the Roach-like genre was a game called Roach by Michael Toy and Glenn Wichman. The game was a big hit and it was released to a wide range of platforms, from PC to early video game consoles. The game consists of procedurally generated levels, turn-based gameplay, grid-based movement, and permadeath. The game is essentially a dungeon crawler. Player will go through sets of random dungeon slash level layout with a random item drop and enemy placement, making it a game that is worth coming back to. And with all that, let's talk about the elephant in the room, Broke. It's essentially a modern tag to the classic Roach-like genre. The game is trying to keep its classic and pure gameplay from the original Roach. Even the graphic is just a bunch of ASCII characters. I know a lot of people when they first look into the game interface, they will be best with tons of questions and confusion because how complex it is. Well, the interface is actually more bearable than the other Roach game. To make you comfortable, I will explain to you and guide you through the interface. Let's start with the in quote UI. On the left side is your character status and below it is a display of the nearest item in your area. It can also display the enemy stats once you attack or getting close to them. Now to the top is a status slash history slash situations report. On the bottom you have more options to choose like auto explore, resting, searching, menu and inventory and you can navigate slash interact with this interface using your mouse most other roach games simply can let you do that the game doesn't have any sound at all but hey it's my time to sign you know i can recommend some music that can potentially be a good companion for your dungeon delving Roach is for the player, represented by the character Ed, to descend to the 26th floor of the Dungeons of Doom, retrieve the amulet of Yender, and return to the surface. When you start the game, you'll be bombarded with colors, especially the color blue. You move around using the arrows key, mouse click, and this thing called the P keys, which is, I don't know if you want to use that, unless you don't have any keypad, but if you have a keypad, don't use that keys, okay? Don't use the P keys. The main goal of the game is to search for the stairs that let you down to the dungeon, allowing you to progress in objective and difficulty. As you fight through monsters, you also discover items such as the one you can wield as a weapon, armors, potion that you can drink, scrolls that you can read, or a wand that casts magic. Monsters will not attack you immediately. They have a stat in their status interface. They can sleep or actively hunt the player. You'll take turns hitting each other, hit it or miss it. They can also be an asshole and take stuff from your inventory and run with it. You'll meet different sets of monsters and with their own characteristics. And you'll soon discover which one to not mess around with. There's also a twist to the game, and this might be the one that makes it different with the other game. You will discover monsters that are held captive or stuck in any way. It's up to you to decide whether or not to free them. If you choose yes, then the monster will join your party and accompany you through the dungeon. The monster also affects the level as a whole, especially the blood. The blood is a flying creature that are like the kamikaze. There's a pink blood which explodes and releasing poisonous gas and pit blood that explodes and open a giant enormous hole which the player falls on. The environment can either help you or mess you up. Bursting a blood ward seed pot releases a cloud of healing spores, but a turret will hurt you real real bad. And traps? 
There's tons of them. You can also go underwater and lose your item, and possibly fight a more hostile monster. There's hole and lava. You can walk into them. Why you wanna do that? I don't know. I mean, jumping into the hole is more reasonable since you can skip the level without searching for the stairs. But you'll break a fall and lose health. You can explore the level through doors, but there's also some secret behind some door. But you'll need a key or a certain thing to do to open up the door. Behind them is an item that can help you through your journey, especially weapons and armors. To get stronger, you need to level up by earning experience killing monsters. It'll automatically increase your stats. You can also get a temporary strength by quaffing a potion. You can enhance your equipment by using scrolls. In terms of equipment, there's a melee weapon and range weapon. These weapons have their own benefits and drawbacks, making it more challenging for the player to decide which are better. But when you first pick up a certain item, they will be unidentified. You don't know what they'll do, and there's no info about them unless you use them or equip them. Healing Potion will not simply say Healing Potion. It will be called Red Potion, Yellow, or Cyan Potion. You need to drink them first, risking your life not knowing what kind of potion you're drinking. And it's also the same with the scrolls. You either got a scroll of enchanting or scroll of spawn monsters. But if you don't want to risk drinking a bad potion or don't have any potions to drink, you can recover your health by resting. Below the health bar, there's a nutrition bar. The nutrition bar is filled up with food. It's basically a hunger bar. You need to take note that food does not heal the player. It's simply just to fill up the hunger bar. For the items that you can equip, you need to use the item for a certain turn, like 500 turns, and blah blah blah. It will eventually open up its stats and detail about the items. So let's talk about resource management. You can only store 24 items. You can use them, drop them, or throw them to the enemy. That's pretty much about the inventory system. It is really well designed in terms of the basic usage and also the graphical aspect of it. Okay, I know this is a short video. So yeah, so that's broke, you know. So still you play this game? Yes, why not? The game is available for download or to play online on the website. I'll provide some link below in the description. The point is that the game is really good and it is trying to be as pure as the original game which is called Rogue and tried to incorporate a more modern tech. Is it hard? No, because it's meant to be played over and over again. It's easy to play but hard to master. But once you pick it up, it's actually hard to put down. This game will introduce you to the classic roach-like experience. So each time you'll play a roach-like game, remember certain things from this game and you'll soon get used to it. But if you feel like the game is too hard, you can switch to the easy mode, at least for 2 or 3 runs. If you need help, there's also a forum you can go or simply a reddit page. Hey, thank you so much for sticking around till the end. If you can please listen to me for a while, no, this is not a sponsor or an ad trip. If you want me to make more videos like this, make sure to let me know. I also want to improve in a certain thing, especially language. I am not a native speaker, nor am I born in a country where the majority of the people spoke English. No. So there's maybe an error in pronunciation and how words are formed. So please leave feedback and thank you for watching.